It's time for Dirt Daily. And I'm back in the shop with Noob Sock. Uh, this is the Jeep that I brought home. It's a 2018 Wrangler two-door. Has some major engine issues, um, but I have a solution. I recently went down to Los Angeles and I picked up this. Ta-da! This is a low mileage Jeep 3.6 liter Pentastar V6, followed by the ZF 8-speed automatic, followed by a sport transfer case. Basically the stock, same exact drivetrain that's in Noob Sock, but here's the best part. This has like 500 miles on it. I was able to horse trade some parts to a buddy that had this. They had pulled all this out when they did a V8 conversion on the Jeep, and it was just sitting in his shop in a crate growing cobwebs. This is out of a 2020, so it's only a couple years old, and it'll bolt right in to Noob Sock. At least that's the plan. So what's next? I'm going to put Noob Sock on the lift, raise it up, and start figuring out what all needs to be disconnected in order to pull the engine and transmission out of Noob Sock to replace it with this. If you missed the earlier video where I talked about why I'm putting a different engine in this, this Jeep was a theft recovery, then it was sold at an auction, then it was bought by a character that got it running but said it had a tick in the engine. So he started taking the engine apart when he found another engine, which he started taking that apart. So I actually bought it with two engines partially disassembled, and he was trying to figure out how to put together one engine. All of that seemed like a lot of work to me, so I was like, what's the easiest way and quickest way to get this back on the road? That's when I came up with that other V6 automatic and transfer case. So now the plan is raise it up and see if we can pull the entire drivetrain out of this thing as one unit in order to put the whole new drivetrain right back in and get this thing running in a few days. What is involved in removing the engine transmission and transfer case from a car, or in this case, a 2018 Jeep Wrangler? Well, there's a couple different ways you can do it. A, you can disconnect each part individually. You can take the transfer case off, you can take the transmission off, and then you can take the engine out. Or B, you could try and pull the entire unit out as one piece. In shops where they do engine swaps regularly or drivetrain swaps, they even go so far as to disconnect the entire body, lift the body up and off, do all the work to the chassis, and then put the body back on. I know at the very least I'm going to have to disconnect front and rear drive shafts, uh, probably get rid of some skid plates, probably disconnect any shifters that go to the transmission and transfer case, disconnect any wires, and then also disconnect the exhaust. So that's what I'm going to start with. Those parts are basically just bolt-on stuff. Before I do anything, I like to go around, blast all the fasteners with some sort of penetrating oil, PB blaster, WD-40, whatever it is that you love to use, spray everything down, go get a coffee, come back, and then start breaking everything loose. Let's go to town. One still in. All right. Woo! Getting away from me. I pulled the rear drive shaft. Here comes the front drive shaft. Now remember, all of these parts you're going to want to put somewhere safe so that you can put them back in. Save all the hardware. Maybe put it in a Ziploc bag with the name on it and keep it all together. Um, sometimes you can take these bolts, put them back in the front axle. I think it's easier just to keep it with the drive shaft uh, so that you know that they all go there. Then you don't have to pull them out again. So I think the next step is I'm gonna undo the mounts underneath here that hold the transmission, transfer case, shifters, anything that's underneath here that I can get to, exhaust. I'm also gonna pull the bumpers off. I'm not going to use these bumpers, so I can delete all those, and that'll just kind of help me move along. 
All right, skid plate is off. This thing is, it's not super beefy, but it does its job. It's like right underneath the transfer case. Held on with big, four, big, big bolts, four big bolts. Um, that's another thing that we'll put in the pile. Probably won't reuse this because we'll probably get some aftermarket like beefy skid plates, but it's good to keep it around just in case. Oh, and this is what I was talking about. Get a Ziploc bag, get a whole box of the little ones and just write on each one of the Sharpie, like this is skid plate bolts. That way when you're going to put the thing together, you know everything is gonna be in this bag. The number of times I was like, oh, it'll be fine. I'll just set bolts on the ground. And then you kick one and that one's gone. I'm trying to put it back together and you can't find it. This is a surefire way to try and keep everything together. There's also a front kind of skid plate thing that goes right underneath the transmission. Like there's a bolt already bounced and ran away. Keep a hold of those things. The other thing that's really great to use is a, some sort of magnetic bolt thing. Um, throw those in there. But don't forget to, oh, there's a little guy holding that one on. Um, don't forget to take them out of that magnetic thing and put them in a bag before you actually uh, move on to the next thing. Otherwise you'll forget and you'll be like, what are these bolts for? Another little cross member dingus. Here's one more thing that I've learned over the years. I'm not very good at doing it, but it makes it a lot easier. When you're done with a tool, put it away. And then when you need the tool, go back and get it. That way you're not running around the shop trying to find a screwdriver or a special impact or whatever. If you just keep track of everything, and try to put it in its place while you're taking it apart. You'll be able to find it when it's time to put it back together. I'm underneath the Jeep here trying to get things disconnected. Probably the next thing I'm going to do is disconnect all of the shifters for the transmission and the transfer case. I started disconnecting this bracket, which shifts the transfer case. Um, a good thing to do when you're working on a project like this where you know you're going to take these parts out but you're going to put other parts back in and you're going to reuse some of these components is to take some photos of it take some pictures of how all this stuff goes together it may seem really simple when you're taking it apart but sure enough if it's a day or a week or a month before you put it back together you're going to be like how does this go again which way does this orient orient so um Take some photos, I'm gonna do that, and then I'm gonna keep disconnecting all these brackets, shifters, maybe even drain the oil, drain the ATF fluid, trying to get the thing drained so that when I'm pulling it out, it, if it could shift over or leak, it doesn't make a giant mess. So drain all that stuff, get it out of there. Also, you might sell this transmission to somebody down the road and they might wanna put it in the bed of their truck. If it's empty, it's not gonna make a giant mess. That's it for this Dirt Daily. I'm moving right along, tearing the noob sock apart. Hopefully we'll get that new engine and transmission and key case in here in a couple days. See you guys next time.